Hi guys, it's Rich here from Midwales Plumbing and Heating Supplies. I hope you are all good. So we had a bit of a chatter today about uh, V4044C valves and their application with heat pumps. Um, and not only just the V4044C, but other ball valves and um, paddle valves, things like that. And they're you know mainly spring return valves, um, which personally, I don't think they're suitable for heat pump heat pump applications. So when we were looking into what we wanted to actually um, achieve with our heat pump sales, uh, we quickly went over to ESB and the Residio V uh, a VC valve, just mainly because, in my engineering opinion, they are a better valve to use with a heat pump uh, to give the actual installations longevity. Um, and to make sure that in the longer term there's least there's less valve failures things like that to happen okay so this is some information i've found out on the on the actual and why i wouldn't use a v4044c okay so i went on residio's own website and i looked up the technical details of the products which you can download there um, I also went on some plumbers forums just to have a look at what the plumbers were saying and just to see what they thought the max kilowatt boiler size for a three port valve was. Okay, and this is quite interesting. So, one of Residio's documents states that the these valves, so the biggest valve that they do, because it didn't stipulate the three quarter or one inch or um, or 22 or 28 mil valve, it said the maximum capacity of these valves was 26 kilowatts. So I was assuming that that would be for the 28 millimeter valve, which has a KV value of 8.1. So I'm assuming as well that when they say 26 kilowatts, what they mean is 26 kilowatts at DT20, which is circa 1,115 liters per hour, okay? So if we translate that um, back into a heat pump, um, that basically works out at uh, six and a half kilowatts ish. Okay, so anything more than six and a half kilowatts, and this valve wouldn't be suitable in accordance with Residio's own documents. So, but what does that mean? So, so if I flip this over. Okay, what does it actually mean though? So this was some interesting stuff. So what I found online was some of the guys on the, plur on the uh, plumbers forum were saying they didn't think this valve was could do any more than 18 kilowatts. 18 and one guy said 20 kilowatts, but the bulk were 18 kilowatts, which is the figure I've always had in my head for some reason. So I was always told rule of thumb, with these valves, the most you could get through them was 18 kilowatts. So that was a rule of thumb I was always told. But when you think about this, maybe the rule of thumb was actually based around the shutoff pressures, okay? So although the valve in theory can get 28 kilowatts through it, should we actually push that, that much through it, through it, okay? So one of the uh, Residio document stated that the maximum shut off pressure for a three quarter valve uh, was three pounds per inch squared. So obviously that's the American terminology, but that translates to 20.68 kilopascals. Okay. In another manual, which was also a V4044C manual, the maximum close off pressure, so that's basically the pressure that when the valve is going is uh, springing back to its valve port, the maximum shutoff pressure of the, of the three quarter valve, which would be the 22 mil valve, is 69 kPa. Okay, and if it's a one inch or 28 millimeter valve, it's 55 kPa. Those were the values that were stated in another manual. So one manual states three quarters should be 20.68 kPa. Another manual states that the shut off pressure should be three quarters, for three quarters should be 69 kPa, okay? So there's a bit of discrepancy there between two online manuals, which obviously is not, is not great. Um, manufacturing structure at the end of the day should be accurate, okay? So why then choose these guys over this guy, okay? So believe it or not, the shut off pressure of the ESB valves 
is 200 kilopascals, okay? So if you've got these guys, the shutoff pressure is 200 kilopascals. If you've got one of these guys, which is a VC range valve, Residio really went to town on these, so they are they are built and they are mega fit for purpose, just like the Esby valves, but these have a 400 kPa shutoff capacity. That's 400, not 40, 400 kPa, okay? So where this valve has a, uh, where the equivalent valve to this, a one inch valve, has the equivalent shutoff pressure of 55 kilopascals, this has 400 kilopascal shutoff pressure. How does it do that? It does it because it has a mechanism like this inside it. So it has a, uh, a spring and, an a, and, a, and a pin that drives down this inner plastic piece and that shuts off the bottom. So basically the water inlet goes in the bottom and out of the side aperture. And if you push it downwards, it goes through the bottom and out of where the white um, inner, inner piece is currently blocking that aperture port, okay? So it is a very, it's, this, mechan this mechanism's been designed for very high shutoff pressures, okay? So four bar, 400 kilopascals, all right? So these guys, how do these guys differ as well from this? So these have a rotary shoe. So these are a round valve on the inside and they have a rotary shoe. The VRG231 has a T-shaped shoe, so the water goes in the middle and with a 90 degree actuator on there, it can shut off this port or this port because it's got a T-shaped shoe. With the, with the 131 valve, it's got an L-shaped shoe in it. So if you didn't know the difference between what we classify as the diverter valve and the mixing valve, the diverter valve has a T-shaped shoe where the L shape, uh, the 131 valve has an L shaped shoe, okay? So basically the water on this valve goes in this side here and it gets shut off between this port or the top port. So you, you, if you were piping this up, you would pipe it up slightly different in configuration. So your inlet would go in here and your outlet would come out the side or the top. If you're mixing it, obviously it blends between one aperture or another, but it can either close this off completely if it's if it wants full flow of the hot water or it can open this aperture up which is normally piped from the return and drag cold cold water into mix in and that's why we generally classify it as a mixing valve where this is generally classified as a diverter valve okay and if you look in there you can just about see the l-shaped shoe so it does look different if you look from top to bottom it looks different if you look from the side look we've got the side closed off currently um, but yeah, these have a 90 degree actuation. Um, I hope that helps guys. If you have any more questions at all, please let me know about either the ESB or the VC range of valves. Um, but if you, if you guys still are fitting ball sprung return valves on heat pumps, personally, I wouldn't be doing that. If it was my business and I was fitting, um, I was fitting heat pumps to systems. I wouldn't be fitting ball oper uh, spring return ball valves or paddle valves anymore. I'd be looking to something a bit better and a bit, bit more uh, fit for purpose. So the ESB valves are available um, up to massive sizes. The VC range valve, uh, it's, a range, it's, it's available in three quarter, one inch, and it will be available in the future in one and a quarter inch. And I'll let you know when they come out. But, um, but like I said, either of these valves are really good. Um, I'm not going to name personal favourites, although I have got ESBs fitted in my own home. Uh, but the VC valve, for the price of that valve, it's very, very good. Um, and that's it. That's more. What can I say more? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you've not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, because I'm going to put this up on my YouTube, um, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, I do try and do videos like this, and I'm going to try and do videos like this a lot more going into the future. But um, if you've liked this video, please like it and uh, give it the thumbs up. And uh, please um, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, also we run a Facebook group called the Delta T Forum. If you've not already jumped on that, um, please jump on that. And, um, and yeah, we, uh, we do a lot on there with hydronics and things like that. So uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.